So we have looked at the various slip systems. Now it's time to get a little familiarized with these slip systems. So first let's look at FCC. We said that for FCC, this is the slip system where this is the glide plane and this is the slip direction. Overall, how many types of, uh, how, uh, how many one, one, one type of planes can you find in a cubic material? And the answer is four. What about 110 direction? And if you look closely, then you would see that there are actually six different variations of 110 direction. But, and here is a catch or basically an additional information which helps us to make uh, or organize our information. For each of the 111 plane, there are only three directions that lie. Three on a given one, one, one plane. Okay, so for each of these one, 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 you will have three one, one, zero directions, which also means that the one, one, uh, the, some of these one, one, zero directions would be shared between one, one, one planes. And this is best described in terms of what is called as Thompson's tetrahedron. And if you do a simple search on Google, you would be able to find some images of this. And uh, although I said tetrahedron, what we are looking at here is a triangle. It is because it is drawn in 2D. Now, if you join the D with the D, if you cut this along these somewhere like this, This will ensure that you, you are able to join it. Similarly, over here, you will have to cut it like this. Now, this is a Thomson set tetrahedron, which is very, very powerful technique to identify the planes and directions in FCC systems. Now, if you connect, once you cut it, you fold such that D comes back to D and from here and over here. And therefore, what you will have is a shape like this. Now, here you can see that there are four faces. So the four faces represent four, one, one, one type planes and each of the face are bound by three edges. So the three edges represent the Burgers vector that are possible on the given slip plane. So clearly from this, for example, if you take this particular edge, which is shared between these two planes. So this particular budget vector is common to both of these. And it uh, also tells you a lot about the dislocations. So if you have a screw dislocation with this budget vector, then you know that the screw dislocation line vector is also along this. And therefore this can cross slip into either of this. So if it is moving here, it can also as well move into this plane. So this is giving you information about the slip plane, the slip direction, and also what are the possible cross slip that is possible in the FCC system. So this way, FCC system can be understood fully using this Thompson's tetrahedron. There are some additional information over here but we will get to understand those more later on. For now, it is sufficient to understand that this is uh, this tetrahedron will enable you to understand all the planes, slip planes, and what the associated budget vector. So now let's look at some examples over here. So let's look at this one. So this is a bar one, bar one, one plane, and 
the Burgess vector possible are, so you will have to add A by two. This is just showing the direction. So A by two, zero, one, one, A by two, one, one bar zero, and A by two, one, zero, one bar. And you can see that the dot product of these would come out to zero because these Burgess vector do lie on this plane. And like I mentioned that this particular, any of these Burgess vector you select will lie on two and exactly two slip planes. So for example, this one, A by two, one bar, one, zero, will be lying on bar one, bar one, one, but also on one, one, one. And therefore this is dot product of this with this is zero, as well as dot product of this with this is also zero. And therefore, if you someone tells you that, uh, let's say we try to solve an example where you are asked that this is the cross slip that is taking place in an FCC system, and you have to identify what is the two, what are the two possible planes, then you can clearly identify. So let's say you have given cross slip. So basically this is double cross slip. You, and the only thing this is given is that this plane is one, one, one. And you are asked to identify P1, P2, you are asked to identify U1, U2. Now it's very easy if you go back over here. So 111 is our plane. So 111 is over here. And uh, the possibilities with which it can cross slip are, so it can cross slip onto this one. It can cross slip onto this one, or it can cross slip onto this one. So the planes P1 or P2 can be any of these P1, or P2, and we will correspondingly U1, U2. So 111 can cross slip onto any of these, basically one uh, bar one, bar one, or bar one, one bar one, and bar one, bar one, one. These are the three possible planes. And you can as well take the negative of this. So if I say this, you, it is as well equivalent to saying this. And when this is the plane, then the only Burgess vector which is common to both of these is zero, one bar, one. And we know that the line vector must be parallel to Burgess vector for cross slip and therefore, this must be also the Burgess vector. This is the line vector as well as the Burgess vector where the cross slip takes place. So the U1 or U2 for this particular case, which is one bar one bar one should be equal to A by two zero one one bar. A by two, zero, one bar, one. Or the negative of this, which is A by two, zero, one, one bar. When we are talking about the other plane, which is uh, one bar, one, one bar. So this is the common one. And here the Burgess vector is one, zero, or the word common direction is one, zero, one bar. But of course the Burgess vector has to have that A by two, or the negative of this, therefore bar one, zero, one. And for the last one, which is bar one, bar one, one, this, which is here, the common vector is one bar one, zero. For Burgess vector, we have, so this is actually for the U1, U2, we don't need this, but for Burgess vector, we would need this factor. So this factor, first, let me write the complete thing. So just to clarify, this is uh, Burgess vector part. For the U1, U2, you don't need this part. Similarly over here. So when you are given a condition like this, you would be able to identify what is the combination of P1, P2, U1, U2 that is possible given this particular plane or any combination of this information. And it is all possible. And in, even without the Burgess vector, you can do the, even without the Thomson's tetrahedron, you can do this. But then you will need to do a lot of uh, 
multiplication, vector multiplication to see and cross check whether this is a dot product or not, dot product is zero or not, and so on. That is the, whether this particular Burgess vector lies onto the plane or not. So overall, this makes the task much simpler for us. Now let's uh, look at the BCC uh, slip system. So here we know that 111 is the closest back direction. We said this is the closest back direction. And unfortunately, here we don't have anything like Thomson's tetrahedron, but we do have a something which can give us partial information using a circle. So if you have 111 as the closest back direction, then for each of this 111, and we know that 110 is the glide plane, but 110, and yes, uh, one more thing that I should now mention at this stage that 110 is the preferred glide plane, but for BCC, there are some more options available like 112 and 123. So depending on material, sometimes 112 and sometimes even 123 are possible glide planes. Now for a given 111, what you would find is that there are three possible one, one, zero direction. Sorry, three possible one, one, zero planes. And uh, similarly, three possible one, one, two planes are possible for one given one, one, one direction. So if you have one, one, one direction, there are basically three different one, one, zero, three different 112, which can contain this one, one, one direction and six different one, two, three. Overall, 12 different possibilities. And like I said, unfortunately, we don't have any Thomson's tetrahedron, but we do have something which serves the purpose. So let's say you have a 111 zone axis is given as 111. Then you can draw the various planes so that normal to this is 111. Basically, you can draw the various planes. So for example, this is one bar one, two bar one. So this is one, one, two type of plane. This is zero, one, one bar. Then you have one R one bar one, two. Then you have bar one. 0, 1, and you also have bar 2, 1, 1, and then you also have 0, 1, 1. And here I have only included uh, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 2, so there are only six different planes that are shown to you. And if you were to include 1, 2, 3 type of planes, then it will be a lot more dense. So even just from this, you can see that a screw dislocation in a BCC system will have so many possibilities. In the FCC system, it had only two possible planes to move on to a given screw dislocation. But in BCC, with only 110 and 112, you get two, uh, six different possible planes. And if you include 123, then there are 12 different planes onto which the uh, screw dislocation can move. And it is not surprising that because of this uh, variation, this is the trace of a screw dislocation looks as if someone has just drawn by hand. And therefore, it is also termed as pencil glide. 
So I hope that we have gotten enough uh, acquaintance with the dislocations and the slip systems. We have looked at the VCC and the FCC system and the particular ways where we can easily identify the slip systems for these two particular uh, crystal systems. So we will end this chapter over here and then we'll come back with new topic in the next week. Thank you.